And hello, everybody, as you're, we're joining. Trudy, I've also given you... Yeah, right. I'm doing it. You're just beating me to it. <laughs> just waiting for everyone to join and get their um, audio connected. It's nice to see some familiar faces back after the break over Christmas. I can see Kathy and Pauline straight away. Hello. And uh, some other names popping up on the screen that are familiar. So, yes, after our, it feels like a very long break. It's probably only been about three or four weeks since we did a class. But um, I don't know, that Christmas break when your brain switches off, it it's, makes it feel much longer. Okay, so while people are just jumping in and we're letting them in, uh, we'll get started with, you know, the admin parts, the, uh, the introduction parts. So for those of you who haven't met me before, my name's Teresa. I'll actually even spotlight myself so that you can find me on the screen and wonder where that voice is coming from. Uh, so my name is Teresa and I am the business development manager for the Thermomix branch that we call Vivid, um, which is a branch that covers uh, the eastern suburbs, uh, inner west, northern suburbs, northern beaches, and then up through uh, Chatswood up to Barara. So we cover a big chunk of Sydney um, and, you know, the surrounding areas. And we know that some of you are coming from places well outside Sydney, but you are still welcome when we, we welcome you here. And the idea of today's um, class is to give you some ideas and inspiration around doing a bit of that batch cooking, if you like, that, you know, that preparation for the return to work, the return to school, so that you don't find yourself in the morning having to pack a lunchbox and going, oh, there's nothing except some dry crackers. Now, that might not be you, that might just be me, but we're trying to anticipate that and give you some ideas where, so that you can actually get yourself started, um, you know, have some things in the freezer or some things in the pantry so that packing those lunches in the morning, whether it's for the office or for school or for an outing, you've got everything ready to go. So we've got a, a range of dishes we're going to share with you today and we're going to be popping into different people's kitchens around Sydney um, so that they can share their talents with you. I'm going to apologise in advance because I'm actually not in Sydney. It's the great joy of working for Thermomix. We have incredible flexibility and we can work from lots of different places. And I live on a farm about two and a half hours outside Sydney and I have a rooster that is crowing like the blazes. And I don't know if you guys can hear it, but if you do, I'm apologising right now because I don't know what his problem is, but he's very noisy. Oh, and it looks like Teresa has frozen on us. Is that right? Has she frozen on us? If she has, we might just get stuck into the cooking and move across to, um, oh, we've got starting us off there. It would be you. It would be you. Thank you, Trudy. Thank you, Teresa. I hope we get you back soon. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm picking um, an old favourite in my house, and it's something that's ideal for lunch boxes. Um, it's ideal to take to barbecues and parties, and they're vegetarian sausage rolls. Um, I have seen grown men fight over these and convinced that there's meat in them. That's how authentic they are. Um, but they're a great option for a school lunchbox. Um, I will caveat that they do have every allergen known to men in them. Um, so we've got gluten in them, there's dairy in them, there's sesame, there's soy. So if you do have any particular dietary needs, this might not be the best dish for you. However, if you don't have any of those concerns, um, this is a really great dish very nutritious for the kids, um, and my kids absolutely adore them. Um, so I'm just gonna talk you through making them. And what I love about these, I've actually made some already today. Um, and what I'm gonna do with the batch I make just now, they're gonna go into the freezer before I cook them, and then they're, they're ready to use over the next few weeks um, to fill those lunch boxes. So my kids are gonna be really happy. Um, so this is a recipe that's in your basic cookbook, whether you're a TM6 owner or a TM5 owner. Um, these are a, a classic Thermomix dish and very popular. So I'm going to work backwards here. I'm just going to go into my week. 
No, I'm not. I've gone the wrong way. Just bear with me. My way. There we go. And here's the two recipes I'm going to be cooking this afternoon. So here's my vegetarian sausage rolls. So I've already got my oven on and I've already lined my baking tray. And I'm just going to start with a brown onion, about 180 grams. Um, I have pre-weighed this, but if you did want to weigh it whilst you were cooking, um, you can just drop the three, um, yeah, you can see that on the, on the close-up. You can just touch the little three noughts and bring your scales up, um, just like so. And then you can weigh in your onion if you want to be particular and then exit out of there and that will bring you there. And then I'm just going to chop those briefly. Sorry if you heard the doorbell going. And I'm just going to chop that for three seconds on speed five. And you'll see, I'm just going to show that to the camera. Well, that one's even better. It's chopped that nice and finely. Um, it's not tiny, tiny. Are you able to see my phone? Sorry, I'm just checking, Trudy. Sorry, I just had to unmute myself. Um, I will find your phone and what I might do is pin it as well so everybody can see both of them on the screen. There it is there. Okay, I can, okay, I can I'll do that. Beautiful, thank you, because it's just a bit easier to do the close-up. So there's my onions, nicely chopped. Excellent. It's going to ask for a tablespoon of dried oregano. Um, and you can use any herbs here, really to your taste. And um, so I'm just going to give that a nice guesstimate. Um, adds that lovely little bit of flavour to it. Um, 100 grams of walnuts. Um, and for any of you that have got primary school children, um, certainly for my primary school, it's a nut-free school. Um, so what you can do is substitute chickpeas, um, just the same quantity of chickpeas, just drain those and throw the same amount in and you really wouldn't know the difference. So there go my walnuts. We do sometimes make these in our school canteen, so that's what we do, we substitute the walnuts for the chickpeas and they work really well. And then we've got 90 grams of rolled oats, just popping those in. And then we're going to mix those together. Yeah. And that's just on speed three, uh, sorry, three seconds on speed six. And again, going to just scrape that down. I'll just show you what it looks like. And that's come together in quite a nice mixture there. Does look very meat-like. Um, so I'm just going to scrape that down. Now, when I'm making these sausage rolls, I tend to use the pre-bought puff pastry. Um, you obviously can make your own puff pastry with a the Thermomix, um, but I find with the sizing and everything, it just makes the whole exercise very quick. I'm just going to add three eggs. And I don't know if any of you owners save your eggshells. Um, I certainly do. And then when I've got a whole bowl full, I put them in the Thermomix and grind them. Um, and then they go into the compost bin and they're much quicker to decompose. Or if you've got chooks, you can feed them to the chooks. Um, so that's another great way of um, a benefit from your Thermomix and getting use of all of that. Um, I'm going to add 150 grams of feta cheese. This is in two bowls. The 50 grams I've got left will be going into my salad tonight. There we go. And a tablespoon of soy sauce, or you can use tamari. And again, I'm just going to have a guesstimate there. That's about right. And 50 grams of breadcrumbs. And actually, what I should have said to you. Um, it's always good to do this beforehand, um, which I have done. Um, so it's always good to read through your recipe, do your breadcrumbs while your bowl's still dry, and then I just carry on. Um, so I actually did have the residue, the bread, breadcrumbs in there when I started. Um, so I've literally used bread, it's two days old. Um, stale bread is really good for breadcrumbs. Uh, it gives a really good texture. Um, if you don't have any in, um, something just like your panko breadcrumbs, they work just as well. Um, so good to have those on hand. 
There we go. There's my breadcrumbs. And then I'm just going to bring all that together now. And that's just going to be for 20 seconds on speed five. And I'm going to get my pastry ready. <laughs> I love the way Zoom mutes the Thermomix so we all sit in silence very calmly and very patiently, um, which is not what I was doing when my internet died while I was talking to you. So um, I'm back, but uh, thank you, Trudy and Kirsty, for stepping in. And you never know, I may go again. Anything can happen. It's one of those days. We'll be just in time to see the end product, Teresa. So here's our filling for the mm -hmm. vegetarian sausage rolls. Um, and I'm just going to move my screen and um, probably won't be my phone. Just going to move this screen. So you'll see I've got just a shop bought um, puff pastry sheet, which I took out just at the start of the call. Um, so that's defrosted perfectly in this heat. And then all I do is I score down the middle um, and just basically cut it in half by scoring it. And then all I'm going to do I'm going to find my little spoon and I'm essentially just going to line up some of my mixture. Now it is a very wet mixture so don't be alarmed. Um, you've got the onions in there, you've got the nuts, you've got the soy. So there is a fair bit of moisture with the feta and stuff as well. So don't be alarmed that it's quite moist. Don't be tempted to overfill otherwise it's all going to spill out. Um, and when I make this recipe I normally get about three or three and a half squares of pastry. I'm filling that. So all I'm going to do is roll that over. I'm going to peel the uh, plastic back. And what I do, if I'm going to freeze, I keep this plastic because then it just keeps them separate in the freezer and stops them sticking. Um, so don't throw it away. I'm just going to roll it over. You don't need to seal it or anything. It's nice and warm. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, I've just got a little bit of milk. I'm just gonna give that a little bit of a gloss. It'll help get that lovely brown, golden um, color to the pastry. Um, and I'm just gonna sprinkle with some sesame seeds. And you can choose anything here. Um, I've done it with fennel seeds. I've done it with poppy seeds. Um, or you don't need to put anything at all if you don't want. Just a little sprinkling of milk will be plenty. Okay. And then all I do, um, for what I'm going to show you, you can either cut them in two so you'd have your normal full size sausage roll, um, or you could do them half that size and have little party size, or you can in fact do that strip in thirds. And then that goes into the oven once you've made those. It's just walking me through. And this is our end product. Great. I've just <laughs> dropped onto the computer. Perfect. <laughs> There you Every, go. Everyday surprises in all households. Nia, they look fantastic. And we've had a couple of tips in the chat. Um, so my tip was if you find that that because the mixture is so wet, spooning it out gets a bit messy, you can actually put it into a piping bag and then squeeze it out in a in one long run. Um, I love the inside of those, Nia. And Kirsty, oh, look at those. And you know what? So many kids don't realise that they're full of veggies. That's what I love about them. Kirsty shared the tip, if you're making them for school and you have to be nut free, you can replace the walnuts with the same weight um, with a mixture of sunflower, pepita and linseeds, any seeds you've got really. And that also works. I often use sunflower as a nut substitute because I've got a couple of friends um, with kids with allergies and it works really well. Now, Nia, show us. I'm just gonna show you. So these are my frozen ones that I took these out of earlier. Um, so these are actually full size ones because um, Mike, I've got a teenager, so enough said. Um, yes. So they're still frozen um, and I've kept that plastic, as I say. They will go in the freezer and then they just need to be cooked for about 20 minutes on 180 um, when I'm ready to use them. Um, as I say, a great entertaining one, great for barbecues, but perfect for the school environment. Um, and if, if, you you're sending them, if you're sending them to school in a lunchbox, do you preheat them or do you send them cold or do you send them in a thermos? Um, my kids like them cold. Um, yeah, could, I do too. <laughs> yeah, you could. You could send them warm and wrap them in foil or something or put them in a thermos. My kids don't tend to mind, but as long as I send ketchup. If yes. I don't put some ketchup with it, which I can obviously make in my Thermomix, um, then party's over. 
Um, so don't forget the ketchup. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you very much for that. We're going to return to you later on. Um, uh, oh, sorry, Colleen has asked a question. Do you cook from frozen? And I think yes, the answer is yes. I do. Yes, um, absolutely. Just 20 minutes um, and then done. You can pre-cook them and then reheat them um, already cooked. Um, so cook them, freeze them and then recook them. Um, I've done it both ways, but I just prefer to do it from the frozen um, part. Beautiful. Um, all right. Well, thank you very much. We are going to cross over to our next beautiful kitchen, which is, if I get the right person and don't add replace spotlight, we have the beautiful Jackie Gilson, who I tell you, everyday surprises, Jackie's had to borrow Trudy's kitchen because there was a power outage in Jackie's suburb. So Jackie is going to be making two dishes for us. Um, she is doing uh, apricot and carrot bliss balls to start off with, and then she's going to get us started on a zucchini slice. So over to you, Jackie. Thank you. Yes, well, I have to say, um, just watching those lovely sausage rolls and the mention of eggs, I realise I have left eggs at home. So I've just raided Trudy's fridge. So thank you, team leader extraordinaire. I'm going to start off doing a couple of favourites in my house, bliss balls. Um, and the ones I'm doing today are the apricot and carrot ones. Um, these are great for the hungry hippos in my house. They, um, you know, you buy bliss balls at Woolies and I think you get four in a packet for $6. And I think all in all, this recipe is probably about $5 to throw together and you're making about 20. So these ones also um, have hazelnuts, but like Tracy said before, I've substituted with linseeds and sunflower seeds as well in this recipe. Um, but for this one, I'm using nuts and we're going to start off with popping in 100 grams of hazelnuts. And it's literally that simple that um, my 14 year old often makes these when I haven't replenished the load. Um, the next thing I'm going to pop in is my lid and my measuring cup. And maybe while it's blitzing loud, we can have some suggestions of different types of whisk balls, which people may have also tried. So it'll, I'll be very quiet for six seconds. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me while we do. Oh, Kirsty's put Jaffa Bliss Balls from the recipe community. I really like the raw beetroot bliss balls. They come out pink. And so, you know, they look fantastic, but they also taste amazing. So, and they're from the Eat Well collection on Cookie Doo. Uh, Brooke has added in macadamia coconut balls. Mm, yes. All right, show us, Jackie. Show us what all that hard work. Okay, just jump in and have a look at how... Um how our hazelnuts have been absolutely milled. So they're perfect and ready to go. And I've just scraped down the side of my bowl. Um, and now I'm gonna pop literally everything else in. So 110 grams of carrots and just peeled and cut into pieces. And 50 grams of peanut butter. Um, I haven't got any homemade ready to go, but we do often make our own peanut butter. And this is the lovely binding agent in this particular recipe. Um, I'm also going to pop in 60 grams of desiccated coconut, which I'll also use to roll the balls in once we're done. Right. I'm going to add in 100 grams of dried apricots. Okay, and um, the recipe does ask for half a teaspoon of cinnamon. I generally don't usually use all that much because it's quite flavoursome um, as it is. And also a quarter of a teaspoon of cardamom. So again, I probably do half of that quantity. So it is a little bit more kid friendly for my bland tasting. Um, pinch of sea salt is optional. And then simple as that, we're going to pop the lid on and we're going to mix it all together. I'm just going to give a quick tip while that's chopping. Um, because that's my Thermomix, you can hear that next button is very loud and that's for a very good reason because if you accidentally clicked it twice, 
you would hear it go click, click nice and loudly. So it's a really good idea to go into your settings, go into your sound and just turn the next button up as loud as you possibly can. Which is good because there's a beautiful glare coming in from outside. So I actually can't see the next button. So I'm glad I can hear it. Right here, I've just mixed, um, taken it off down off the sides and mixed it in. And we're going to pop it on for one more little mix. And then we're almost ready to go. Oh, Deborah, peanut butter bliss balls sound fantastic. I'm just reading in the chat. I, uh, I'm a big fan of peanut butter anything. And if I can pretend that it's, you know, healthy as a snack, then I'm all over it, which is where bliss balls come in very handy. Um, and again, if you are making them for school and you, you don't want to put nuts in, those seed substitutions, you just substitute for weight, work really well. Back to you, Jax. Yeah, fabulous. All right. So that is all nice blended in together and it's ready to go. And so I just literally grabbed 20 cent pieces and roll them into a little ball. And then I've got um, on the side, just a little bowl of desiccated coconut. And I pop them in, let them roll around a little bit. And there we have it. They're perfect. They go in the fridge. I haven't actually frozen these before, but I believe you can, simply for the main reason that they last about uh, 48 hours in my house. Um, but super simple and easy. And there we go. Hey. They look delicious. I haven't had them for a long time. I think it's time I made them. Now, we were going to continue on with you, but we're just because we like to keep everyone on their toes, we're just going to re we're rearranging our class a little bit uh, and letting getting Mel uh, in to do her dish so that she can go and attend to a family matter. So I'm going to replace you with Mel and then we'll come back to you for the zucchini slice. So here okay. we go. Mel, over to you. Thank you, everyone. I'm so sorry, Jackie. Liam has been hit by a ball at baseball, so I have to um, get down there. So welcome to my kitchen, everyone. I'm doing scrolls three ways or two ways, as it turns out now. And I just use the usual everyday pizza dough um, recipe, and which is just flour, yeast, sugar, and water and a bit of olive oil. And here's some I have prepared earlier. So Love the kneading function. No longer am I doing a 45 minute knead. Um, I do apologize for Jackson Brown in the background. <laughs> he can smell the food. Um, and so when I do my uh, scrolls for the boys, I actually make the dough the night before. I pop it in the fridge and it actually proves overnight. So get up in the morning, roll it out um, and add you whatever it is, whether you want sweet, savory, it really is super, super easy. So I'm just gonna angle my camera down so you can see the screen. Oh, sorry, um, the bench. So the bench even. Okay. We so can. I <laughs> don't you love children? I mean really. All right. So in with the scrolls, you want it to be a rectangular, um, rectangular shape. And this is a half, this is half the dough. So the other half has already made some scrolls, which you'll see, see shortly. But the dough does make about 10 full-size scrolls. Now, if you were buying a pizza scroll from Baker's Delight, we had this discussion the other night, you're looking at probably close to $6 a scroll. So with the Thermomix, the scrolls that we've turned out, so there's two, four, six, eight, ten 10 um, already done, and there'll be another 10 coming out of this dough. So that's 20 mini scrolls. So... Um, if you're just doing full size ones, it would be 10 for about ooh, $8. They freeze beautifully. You can actually um, freeze them um, raw or you can freeze them cooked. It depends what you want to do. Now, if you're going to freeze them raw, the great thing about that is you can grab them out of the freezer, turn on your oven, pop them in on a baking tray. Um, 20 minutes later, they'll have defrosted and baked and you'll have fresh scrolls ready for school. So just a really simple um, pasta sauce is all I use, which is just tomatoes. Um, there are some hidden veggies in this. I've got some, some capsicum that was looking a bit, you know, odd. Um, some zucchini. I've probably gone a bit overboard on the garlic because I had a heap of garlic that just needed to be used. Just going to whack that on. And the flavours really are 
up to you. So with this one, I've just gone with a Danish salami. Like so, and I'm not particularly, um, what's the word, pretty with my scrolls, shall we say? Um, you could do, if you're gonna do sweet ones, you could do custard and apple. Um, with the ones that I've made already, I actually did banana and Nutella. So, um, <laughs> No, we don't want to waste any food. That's exactly right. So basically, you can do a whatever's in your fridge. So um, particularly if you're trying to hide veggies, scrolls are a great way to do it. Not only can you put it in the sauce, but you can also actually put it in on the topping of your um, of your scrolls. So just going to whack on some cheese. This is actually the leftover from the um, lunchbox class we did during the week. I normally grate my own cheese, but it's just been one of those what's in the fridge weeks. And away we go. Okay, so now it's a going, I'm just going to roll it. Now, because this edge is slightly smaller, I'm going to start with that. And it's such a soft and pliable dough. It really is just beautiful, she says, as it doesn't want to work. All right, there we go. Now, normally, I would just use my dough scraper to cut, but it's not a fan of the meat. So what I'm gonna do is grab a chopping board that's going to go underneath my scroll because the last thing I wanna do is chop on my thermomat. And away we go. So while I'm doing this, if you wanna pop in the chat, what are your favorite scrolls? Do you flavor your dough as well? So for example, do you add um, some um, spinach in and turn your dough green? You Kirst, could add some. Kirsty's ahead of you. She's actually added in uh, pumpkin dough and added a link to make pumpkin dough. See, she's just too efficient. I know, I reckon, too efficient. I wonder if you do sweet potato dough. I've got a couple of kids that would actually eat that. Um, uh, Trudy, of course, is going with, uh, we do love our traditional cheese and Vegemite scrolls. Now We do love those. Now, the other tip I like to use for cutting up scrolls, unless it's got meat, when, which is when you need the knife, is actually using a bit of fishing string or a bit of cotton to actually uh, tie around and pull through the um, scrolls. It gives you a much rounder and less squished scroll. It certainly does. Um, or you can use dental floss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dental yeah. floss is so also. Excellent. They would go into the oven and bake for 15 minutes and they would then come out looking like so so these are nutella and banana scrolls and if i just break one open you'll be able to see how soft mm -hmm. and fluffy mm -hmm. they actually are and yep they taste really good too and jackson brown's eyes are following every movement oh i know right <laughs> I hope, <laughs> love a hopeful dog yeah. mel yeah. thank you so much my absolute pleasure and i'm so very very sorry that i have to run that's okay but thank you everyone for coming and we'll see you again next time you off you go i hope he's okay me too right. see ya bye so after our after our little you know interruption to proceedings which we're always happy to do jack so you ready to get your zucchini slices started yeah, perfect. Actually, I um, I really appreciated the break so that I could wash my hands from the carrot balls. So perfect. You didn't have to watch that. Okay, so I'm now going to be doing a zucchini slice, but what I'm actually going to do is to make it even more lunchbox friendly, so I'm actually going to pop it in the loaf tin. So this is one of my favourite mix shop accessories. So I'm going to make little mini zucchini slices. So I've put my oven on to 180 to start to warm up, and I've just lightly sprayed my, um, my loaf pan. And I'm going to put in, pop in a half grams of cheddar. I've actually just realized another accessory which I don't have, which is a bowl. But I will um, sort that out very, very quickly whilst the cheese is grating. So I've popped the cheese in and I'm going to pop it on with my lid and for five seconds. Fabulous. Okay, and I'm just going to transfer it into a large bowl. 
The good thing about um, this particular recipe as well is, is that you don't have to wash the bowl in between. It all just ends up going in together, um, which makes it an even easier one to throw together really nice and quickly. I love that you're finding everything in my kitchen, Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> when you said you need a bowl, I'm like, oh, quick, where is a bowl? And the next thing I see, you've already found one. <laughs> The stress is real. <laughs> we should explain. Tr Trudy's upstairs. Jackie's downstairs in Trudy's kitchen. It's, you know, cooperation at its finest. Absolutely brilliant. Who would have thought? All right. Um, now I'm just going to add 350 grams of zucchini. So I just cut them into quarters so they're still quite um, chunky. And, in fact, I think it's bags which had... Um, six in them and I wanted to use them all up so I've got a little bit extra so I might need to just uh, chop it I'll have a quick look after four seconds a little bit more but the beauty of this dish as well is I find that the zucchini is um, the flavor is so soft that I can actually hide the fact to my son that he's eating a green vegetable so I'm just going to quickly go back because it's not quite um, Chopped is enough, which I like it. So four more seconds. And while it's chopping, we can introduce the beautiful Mabel who's walking around in the background. Everyone's got their dogs on show today. It's very special. Yes, I think Mabel has given us a special little surprise in the lounge room too, Trudy, just quietly. Okay, so I'm going to transfer this back now into the bowl with my cheese. Okay. <laughs> all right i don't know if anyone any of us know how to respond to that so we're all just letting you cook <laughs> okie dokie so the next step i'm going to uh <laughs> the next thing i'm going to do is ask you to pop in um a brown onion just in quarters so pop that in. And as it starts to, um, oh, and, and some three, so I'm getting ahead of myself, and also three rashes of bacon. And, and again, Jack, you can, always, my add favorite. A, you can always add a bit more bacon, can't you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've added more zucchini, I've added more bacon before, I've even added more cheese to make it a bit cheesier. So it's obviously guided cooking, but you can flavour it as you go to what you like. So I'm going to give that a little chop before we pop it on to sauté. And I think um, we were going to hand over to the next person while that sauté is away for us. You are correct. So I will, if you want to mute yourself, I'm going to pop over to... Stephen, hello, Stephen. I'm going to take Jackie off. I tell you, oh, everyday surprises in a very real way. Now, now that I've actually caught my breath. So Stephen is going to be making just, I've got a mental blank. They're energy bars with, what's in them? We can't hear you. High tech, high tech gear needs to be readjusted. What? Does that work? Yes. Hello. Well, hello. <laughs> so can Whoops, you remind me? Off. You're making energy bars and they yeah, are, yeah. what is the flavour called? So we're using um, almost out of date bananas. Yes. Uh, dates are going to be uh, the sugar substitute. Lovely. Uh, walnut, rolled oats and desiccated coconut. A little bit of cinnamon. Um, I'm sticking with the recipe, but I've done these with, um, I like the mixed spice, you know, um, gives a, yes. just a, just a right. cinnamon can be a bit tough sometimes I find on the flavours, but I'm going to stick with the recipe today. Pinch of salt. And that's it. Um, but obviously there's quite a few versions you can do. You could add cacoa, you could add some dark chocolate melted on top and all those sort of things. And I'll talk you through a few of those, but let's get going because I need to actually try and get mine in the oven so we can yes. see them at the end. So we'll as I said, the sugar substitute light. is um, the, the dates. And actually, I was actually very fortunate. I had all of these ingredients in there, in the house, um, except for these. And I did think, oh, should I put prunes in? but decided not going to be sweet enough. So I went with it. I went and got some dates this morning. So 100 grams of that. 
And then we're going to use the turbo mode for literally a couple of seconds. It, the machine locks it in place and off we go. And that has neatly chopped down the, um, can you see that guys, the uh, dates? Pretty even. Now they, we're going to do a blitz again in a minute, so they will get mixed up with the rest of the ingredients. And then I think it's pretty much everything. So your walnuts, um, they do recommend cutting them in half already. So it's 100 grams of walnuts. Uh, the rolled oats, I've just got slightly over 100 because that was left in the pack. Uh, the desiccated coconut, which is 50 grams. And I think then the two bananas. Uh, so I've just chopped that into four or five pizzas. Just uh, those are pretty um, beyond my taste. I'm a very, I like, you either like green bananas, I think really, really um, ripe ones. I'm a green banana man. So these sort of recipes are great for finishing off fruit that I would otherwise probably throw in the bin. Um, then it's a little bit of cinnamon. And now it's only a quarter teaspoon. And I think for my taste, that's probably about right. But as I said, I'd normally put some mixed spice in. I just like the more even flavor. And then good pinch of Himalayan pink salt, just for an extra bit of taste. And then again, back to turbo mode. Arms are locked in place automatically. And I've already got a uh, pre pre oiled um, baking tray, 20 centimeters square. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pour this in um, and we're going to divide it into about eight to 10 bars. So one down the middle and then four or five slices um, along the sides. And I'm going to use the palette knife from the mix shop just to give me a straight edge. You're not going to watch me do this. You don't need me to do that. But I'm just going to use a little blunt butter knife to give me a score. And it's just good because that's way above the, the uh, sort of edges of the knife and it just gives me a straight edge. So I'm going to play with that, um, Teresa, whilst, uh, whilst you guys carry on, if that's all right. That is fine. Um, um, I am curious, have you tried making these in one of the bar mould tin? I, I, I haven't because I don't actually own, own that tin yet. But when I saw, um, was it Nia using it? I thought that's a great idea. <laughs> um, yes, I, so Every time we see these on a class, we all want to add to our uh, already overflowing mix shop purchases. Yeah, um, so um, just, just to show, to show you guys, yeah. that's the consistency. So it's pretty, it's not a wet, wet mix, um, but it takes about four, uh, 20 to 30 minutes in a hot oven, 180 degrees. So I'm going to get on with this. But as I said, a um, couple of things that you could do, um, five seed bars. There's a few recipes on Cookie Do, um, Teresa, that, that the guys could look at. Yeah. Um, also adding cocoa just to add that chocolate flavor. Mm. Or even if you wanted to go a little decadent, melt a little bit of um dark chocolate personally rather than the milk and just yeah. you know give, give a little drizzle on top yeah like the muesli bars you get that have got you know a little bit of chocolate yeah there, that they're you know a treat beautiful and, well I, I, know, and I was just going to say going? you know you can spend five or six bucks a little bar in in the shops buying these and this mm. isn't going to cost you that uh, to do the whole mix which we're going to get eight to ten out of yeah beautiful I'm loving the theme that's developing today of everyone using up what they've already got and saving money so you know we always love to say Thermomix, you save time, you save money. You also don't waste your leftover veggies and fruit. So thank you. Now we are, we're going back to Jack's. We're doing a lot of zipping backwards and forwards here. So let me just go back to Jack's who her onions will have sauteed. And while we're doing that, give her a couple of minutes to just catch herself. I'm going to catch my breath. I just wanted to share with everyone. I don't know if you've heard the news that we've, you've seen everyone's very beautiful very beautiful white thermomixes, but I'm just going to share my screen and show you a very pretty picture. What do we think of this? Have you heard that there is a limited edition black thermomix coming? And at the moment, it's only available to consultants. So these three arrived in our Melbourne office yesterday and they were pulled out of their boxes to be set up. And then we're going to be having a little play with them and showing people what they're like, particularly our consultants. I thought I'd share a photo with you um, because a little bit of a little bit of a you know insider bit of info. They will be available to the public sometime later in the year, but at the moment, the only way to get them is to be a consultant. So if you've already got a white TM6 and you really want a black one, if you 
join and become a consultant this month, well, actually, February, I'm losing track of what day it is. So, you know, in the next couple of days, over the next couple of days, um, with six points, which could be six sales or some recruits and sales, you could have a black Thermomix to be the pigeon pair on your bench. So if that's something that interests you, reach out to your consultant or respond in the poll we'll run at the end um, and, and uh, see if you can be one of the first in the country to have, you know, I keep saying black is back, baby. Now, now that I've done my plug for the black, Jackie, how did your onions go? Yes, so we're good. So it smells absolutely divine here. Our bacon and onions have um, sauteed beautifully. So the next step is we're going to add five eggs, which I have raided from Trudy's fridge. Thank you again, Trudy. And we're going to add 100 grams of rice flour. Um, so rice flour, I actually don't buy rice flour anymore. I just buy rice and I mill it using my Thermomix. So another lovely cross saver, and then it's always fresh. Um, Although we do make this particular recipe probably once or twice a week at home. So we do go through it and it's a gluten-free option. Uh, the next step, we're going to add a pinch of salt okay, and a little bit of pepper. And in goes everything else, our cheese and our grated zucchini. super simple to do and we're going to give it all a little bit of olive oil okay I actually don't use the 80 grams I use about half of that because I find it's quite a moist recipe and I'm going to pop my lid on and give it all a nice mix And we're ready to go. Now, I actually do also use um, the muesli bar molds, um, also for zucchini slice as well. So I brought them extra because I always fill a little bit more than one tray. But I uh, have got my beautiful um, egg and zucchini, beautiful Ooh. batter, ready to go. So I'm going to pop it in and I'll show you what they look like once they come out a bit later. Lovely. And we'll have a bit of a chat to you then about how you store them, you know, send them off to school, etc., etc. Okay, where are we up to? I think Nia, is she is she around? Here she is. Okay, I am we're going back to Nia because Nia, having whipped up the beautiful vegetarian sausage rolls, is now going to show us how she whips up soft cinnamon donuts, which uh, amazing. And I just want to, oh my goodness, look at her. She's got the mini vac ready to go. Nia. Well, you know, that little faux pas I had where I dropped the sausage rolls on my laptop, it's covered in sesame seeds. I just thought I'd uh, give it a whiz, oh. show you how it works. Um, I love this. And for those of you that don't know, this is the gift with purchase. Um, so if you were to upgrade or buy a TM6 um, in the next few weeks, this will be for free. Um, it's a great little um, dust buster, much better than Dyson. I'll just give you a little demo. It is amazing. While, while she's busy vacuuming her keyboard and possibly freezing, it's not me this time. Um, I can tell you, I have my mini vacuum cleaner. Uh, I absolutely... Absolutely love it. I've been away camping uh, recently down to the coast and I took the vacuum. I've just been talking away to myself beautifully, haven't I? Oh, okay. I'm going to, I don't know what, I think Nia might have vacuumed up uh, her ability. That was totally my fault, Teresa. I was trying to spotlight you and I hit the wrong thing. And you muted me. <laughs> oh, so you heard, so what I was saying was I no, took my. I only lost my, a tiny little bit of it. Beautiful. I took my, I took my mini vacuum. Uh, camping and getting the sand out of everything was forget the I normally have a dustpan and brush and a broom I just went and went oh it was so nice to get up in the morning and not be crunching under feet in in you know when you're getting out of bed so yes and as Nia so beautifully said they are our gift with purchase if you buy a TM6 before the night or yes before midday on the 9th of February we also while we're doing our plugs 
if you don't know, 36 months interest-free payment options are available at the moment, which means that if you want to get a TM white TM6 on your bench uh, at the moment, you can do it for under $17 a week. Um, we also have a pair-up option. If you buy your Thermomix, you get your free mini vac, and you can also upgrade and include the Cobalt vacuum cleaner and the mop head. Now, I know it's got nothing to do with cooking and I'm not actually selling vacuums, but this is a game changer because you can vacuum and mop at the same time. So if you pair up, you get to save on my $600. So if it's something you're interested in, do have a chat to your consultant. Anyway, now that we have done that, have we got Nia back? I saw her connecting, connecting, connecting. She, she was just too good with her vacuuming. Okay. Oh, it's all happening. Um, while we're waiting for Neil, what else can I tell you? Uh, hmm, let me see. What have I covered, Trudy? Oh, trade up. I was about to say, how did I forget the thing that's been dominating every thought for the last two weeks, if you haven't already heard? If you've been hiding under a rock somewhere, you may not be aware that Thermomix is once again doing a trade-up offer. So from the 14th of February to the 28th of February, you will uh, be given the opportunity to trade in your TM21, TM31, TM5, uh, and be able to buy a TM6 for $1999. Um, and that includes whether they're working or not. So I have had someone ask if they could have, if they could trade in one that was melted in a fire. And I was told yes, because our recycling process applies whether it's working or not working. Um, and we like to dispose of them in an environmentally friendly way. We also identify a few of the models to um, give to some of the charities that we work with or that we nominate. So it's a really good program um, when uh, we do the trade-in. So if, if you've been thinking about upgrading or thinking, mm, I really like having my old five and my six on the bench, but I'd really like two sixes, this is your chance. The other thing you may not be aware of is that a lot of consult, a lot of customers aren't connected to their original consultants anymore because, you know, they retired, they left, other things happened. And uh, we are currently doing a call around. So you may get a call from a consultant asking if you're in touch with someone or not. And if you're not, can they support you, help you, give you information? If you, you are working with a consultant or you've got a relationship with a consultant, just tell them. It's not a drama. But I just don't want you to think that you're getting some sort of random spam calls coming through. Mm -hmm. If you get messages from consultants going, hi, I'm a consultant in your area and I wanted to touch base, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we are, we're trying to just make sure everyone's connected and getting the customer support that you pay for when you buy your Thermomix. Now, do we have Nia back? Let me see. I can you hear me on my phone? I can hear you on your phone. You vacuumed your computer too hard, didn't you? Well, I don't know. The internet's dropped out, so I'm actually on um, my phone data. Oh, good. I'm not blaming the um, not blaming the mini vac after all. <laughs> <laughs> you on just with the screen, and you'll just have yep. to. Yeah. If you just if you just quickly take us through these beautiful donuts uh, and yeah. what what your tips are, because I know you make them a lot and successfully then uh, we'll go for it. Excellent. So I've just preempted the first step, which asks for um, 50 grams of raw sugar. And then um, we mill that to make it like icing sugar. Um, and then I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And I've already done that, which you can see here. So it just makes a lovely aromatic cinnamon sugar. Um, it actually makes a lot. So I tend to halve it when I do it normally. Um, I've left it as the full recipe today um, because um, I've made two loads. So I've already pre-made a batch and I'm gonna make some with you now. Um, so in terms of the recipe, we'd mix those together and put it aside, which I've done. You'd normally preheat your oven to 180 degrees, which I will do, and spray a 12 hole donuts in, which you can get um, on the mix shop. Um, now here's my very old donut tin. It's not from the mix shop. And what I tend to do, I'm sorry, I'm on one screen here, um, is that I will just give it a quick spray, just with some um, 
can canola oil, just spray oil. Um, and then I'll use my pastry brush um, just then to rub that round to make sure that it's fully covered. Um, just a little tip there. Anyway, 70 grams of raw sugar, which is going in. I know you can't see this. You're going to have to take my word for it. And then what we're going to do is just pop the lid on and I'm going to mill that to make it a much finer sugar just for 10 seconds on speed nine. So let me yeah. go. The top of the thermomix looks like it's smoking, but it's just the dust. There we go. And another tip here, it basically asks you to scrape it down. And in the true essence of today, we're not wanting to waste anything. So what I tend to do is I'll use a pastry brush and I will just brush down the edges. It makes it a lot easier um, just to brush it down that way and much more even. And again, you can get that pastry brush from the mix shop. Um, all the accessories we use are available for you to purchase yourselves. Then we've got 60 grams of grapeseed oil. And you'll see the scales have automatically come up. I'll just tear those because they're not quite on zero. There we go. Minus one, that will do, I can live with that. And then just always be careful with liquids just to go a little bit slowly towards the end because it does take a second or two to register. There we go. Then we go next, we're gonna have 120 grams of plain flour, which I've obviously weighed earlier. Here's one. And what I love about this recipe is the kids think they're getting a great treat because it's donuts, but really it's just a cake recipe. It's quite healthy. Two tablespoons, uh, sorry, two teaspoons of baking powder. God, don't do tablespoons, that'll be huge. A pinch of salt. I'm just going to do my salt cellar, pop that in, and then two pinches of ground nutmeg. So again, just got the lovely nutmeg there. Just going to give that a couple of pinches, adds that lovely flavour. And then 120 grams of full cream milk, which of course I need to grab from the fridge. It's so hot here today, I didn't want to risk leaving it out. So that's popping in there. And again, with the liquids, just take my time towards the end. I'm very good at overdoing it. And it's not as easy to take liquids out. There we go, spot on. And you're under a little bit of pressure with your screen being so closely on display. So you're doing incredibly well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> One egg going in there. That will be going composted afterwards. And then I'm just gonna pop the lid on. And that's gonna mix for 20 seconds on speed four. And it, when my children were small, I had a friend who used to say that she was actually really happy for her kids to eat cake because she knew they were getting milk and eggs and flour and only a little bit of sugar and that all of those things on their own are actually quite good for them. If you look at cake and think it's terrible, um, she said even you know, the butter in the cake is actually, you know, has protein and dairy and good fat. So it changed my view of wanting to feed my kids cake. My kids don't like cake that much. It's like, really? I'm actually no, one of those people who wants to give you cake. And all right, back to you, Miss yeah. Nair. How are we going? Ready to start? All, right. all I've done, I've scraped okay. down the edges and I'm going to give, just to make sure there's no bits of flour and eggs stuck to the edges. And there normally is just a little bit on the edge. Um, I'm just going to give it another five seconds on speed okay. four, just to give it a final push. Now in the recipe, what they recommend now is to let it stand for 10 minutes, okay? Um, and that just allows it to kind of thicken a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna pour one for you to see. Um, 
if I can just move that down a bit. Here we go. And all you need to do, I'll move on to the next step so you can see it, um, is half fill your donut tray. So don't be tempted to overfill it because what will happen is they'll overflow and then you won't get that lovely hole in the middle. Uh, let's just put that so you can see it there. So, and then what I'll do, I'll go and fill um, my 12 little donut trays. Sometimes it goes over, there's a little bit spare um, after I've le left it to set for 10, um, sorry, for, for 10 minutes. In this time, my oven would have been preheated to 180, which I'm not going to do. Um, and that would actually bake for 10 minutes, okay? And then all you do then is allow it to cool in the tray for five minutes. And I'm gonna show you one I prepared earlier. Honestly, it's like a TV cooking show. Here's one I prepared earlier. And here we are, some Whoa. beautiful donuts. Now the cinnamon part, this is the best part. Um, when the donuts are warm, I've got a sun hovering here as I speak. Let me just put that so you can see it. I've got my cinnamon sugar. I'm just going to roll that in the donut. Oops. And there is your finished effect. So a beautiful cinnamon sugar donut. Um, these, they say in the recipe, best eaten fresh, obviously. Hang on, this is just being donated to somebody. That's gone. Um, best eaten fresh. Um, they do keep for a day or two in an airtight container. Um, so for me, um, if I make 12, that will last me a good three days of morning teas and maybe a little surprise when they come home from school as well. Um, a very quick recipe to do, so tasty. Um, and as I say, you don't need all that sugar, I don't think. And um, you can certainly get away with half of that. Um, so there we go. That's uh, soft cinnamon yeah. on a phone. <laughs> And, and they look beautiful. And again, I'm going to stop the spotlight. And uh, if you are viewing from home and you're not on gallery view, I recommend you go to gallery view because, oh, my goodness, how amazing has everyone been today with all of the hiccups that we've had. We've had power outages. We've had internet outages. We've had kids injured. We've had dogs misbehaving. And they've all just kept going. So we will cross back. Jackie, when yours are ready to come out of the oven, just wave at me. Um, and Stevens is still in the oven as well. Um, Trudy's been filling the chat with lots of information for you. So if you're interested in the donut trays, she's got the link there. If you're interested in learning more about our trade up offer, the link is there. Um, but we're also going to send you out an email after this with all the different links and bits of information that you can um, can use. So Oh, not quite the smooth run that we like, but um, we've achieved a lot today. So just to do a little bit of a recap, we have got the sausage rolls, the vegetarian sausage rolls that Nia made are great for either baking and then freezing or making, freezing and then cooking on the day. We have uh, the bliss balls that Jack's uh, showed us, which are, again, great for popping in the fridge and then popping into a lunchbox in the morning. Uh the zucchini slice, which because of our different delays is uh, still in the oven, but oh, hang on, Jax has got something to show us. Let's go back. I'm going to spotlight her. Here's one she prepared earlier. Show us what you've got. Oh, look yeah, at so those. I, I whipped up a batch this morning because when I do them, my kids take four each. So really I want to be doing quite a bit to get them going. Um, fresh, I pop them in, uh, let them cool down. I pop them in an airtight container in the fridge for overnight. But what I do when I do do it in, in large batches, I put four in a snap lock and pop them in the freezer. And I either take them out the night before and pop it in the lunchbox or even on the morning off. And they're beautiful, hot and cold. I actually prefer them cold. Um, so my others are still browning in, in the oven, um, but these ones are ready to go. And I did also have an assistant who finished up with the rolling of all of the bliss balls did she earn herself a taste test oh yeah she ate a few while she was sitting <laughs> <laughs> so they look fantastic and again they're the sort of things um for uh, being able to have handy ready to go there's a really sensible question in the chat how long do you change the cooking time for the zucchini slice if you're doing it in the bars rather than in one big pan yeah absolutely half an hour in the big pan 
And at 20 minutes, I start to check when they're in the smaller ones. So generally between 20 and 25, um, when they're in the smaller ones, you just want to watch it brown on the top. Yep, perfect. Um, and Victoria's question was, do you, you have to put them in a mould? Actually, our recipe, Victoria, normally you do do it in that larger tray. Jackie's actually just changed it to put it in the mould. So you actually can do one or the other. Um, and if you do do it in the large tray, then slice it up. Um, and again, you can either wrap it individually and pop them in the freezer, or you can put them in a container in little batches. So we've got some really good options. Thank you. And I honestly, I wish I was a little bit closer to Sydney because that is making me feel very hungry. Um, and to Deb's question, I will email you the links to all the recipes after we finish today. So you don't have to try and scroll back through the chat and get them all. Now, Stephen has pulled his energy bars out of the oven. Oh, look at those. So these are the oat and banana energy bars. They look fantastic. Yeah, can you hear me? I can. Cool. Um, so yeah, I was going to say they've just come out, and you know how I said that the mixture is quite dry. I'd forgotten that when you um, sorry, I think I've got feedback. Sorry, let me just yeah. try something. Beautiful. Does that help? Much better. Thank you. Sorry, a bit of time. Yeah. So I was going to say um, I've forgotten that when you cook them, that banana that um, is oh quite a, quite ripe actually moistens the bars. So when you open the oven and check, you know, my oven's a little bit uneven in its cooking, so you have to turn it through 180 degrees halfway through the cooking. And that smell that came out was like, yeah, there's the banana punch. And you could mm -hmm. just you could just see the um the moisture in them uh, just oozing out. So you meant meant to leave them in the tin now for about 10 minutes to cool. Um yep. hopefully you can see the score score lines, not the best in the world, I must admit. Um oh, and they, they'll they'll sit for a few more minutes, put them on a on a wire um, rack, and then you'll be able to break them later on. And as per most of the other stuff we've had today, Teresa, these can be stored in um, an airtight container for about eight to 10 days. Um, you can freeze them. And I'd recommend um, a bit of greaseproof paper um, in between the slices, you know, if you're stacking them in one container, just so they don't stick. And then in a, in a lunchbox, um, little brown paper bags or something like that, just to try and be a bit more environmentally friendly. Beautiful, or even beeswax wraps, which of course are reusable yes. really well. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. I look honestly, I'm a little bit slack. I don't have to do a lot of school lunches because I have um, a child who does distance ed. But when we have a break for lunch, we often don't have. She ends up, you know, with something that's processed, and I'm thinking I need to start making these myself. So thank you, Stephen. All right, so that wraps up our uh, our show and tell, our finished products. Um, as I said, we have uh, we've had a had a slightly you know uneven run to our day, but I'm really glad you're all able to join us. We will send you out an email with all the links. Before you go, I'd just like to run a little poll because I always forget to do this. So if you wouldn't mind, just those of you who oh, failed to start poll, another poll has started. There you go. Can everyone see the poll? Anyone? Yes, you can. Beautiful. If you can answer the poll, that would be great. Um, but in the meantime, if you have any questions, please, we'll stick around for a couple of minutes. Um, otherwise, I'll send you an email with all of that information. And if you are interested in any of the amazing offers that are coming up with um, the trade-up offer, the uh, being being kept informed about when the Black Thermomix is becoming available or earning one early, um, the mini vac that's on, the beautiful cobalt upright vacuum cleaner and mop it. Honestly, we have so many things on offer I can't remember. But if you are going to host a cooking experience, did you know that you can get the blade cover peeler as a host reward? And it's amazing. It peels your potatoes, your sweet potato, your carrots, your beetroot, your garlic, anything. It's peeling. It saves time. And it's one of those things where everyone goes, oh, well, I can't peel vegetables. Guess what? Now it can. Um, thank you to those who have uh, answered the poll. If anyone else is able, if anyone else is going to, that'd be great before we um, we finish up. But otherwise, if no one, I'll stick around for some questions. But I always thank you to our presenters. And despite all our technical hiccups, you all did an amazing job. Um, and thanks for working on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, for everyone who joined us, we thank you. And uh, I'm going to end the poll. So I can see you all and I'm going to stop recording so you don't have to. Yes, I really do.